Okay, good day everyone. We are already done with these three topics here. Selection, uh, housing and facilities, as well as brooding management. Okay, now let's proceed to management of growers, alright? So, in management of growers, um, we will be discussing the following, okay? The systems of, uh, of rearing, growing of pullets, and signs of sexual maturity, Okay. So, let's start with systems of rearing. So, after the, bro uh, the brooding stage, okay? So, after the brooding stage, the chicks are transferred to the grower house, okay? Or provided with a much wider floor space, okay? Unlike brooder houses, uh, grower houses are no longer provided with heaters. So, hindi na kailangan ng mga heaters dito sa grower house. Grower house, kasi nga sabi natin sa brooding, um, pinuprovide or sinusupplement lang natin yung uh, heat sa kanila kasi hindi pa sila comfortable sa cold environment. But when they are already on the grower stage, kaya, nilang, kaya na nilang mag-survive on their own without supplemental heat. Okay? So, generally, the grower chickens are reared on wider floor space. Of course, uh, lumalaki sila so kailangan nila ng wider na floor space. Okay? yung um, house constructions for uh, brooder uh, or for sorry for the grower house could be free range or extensive system semi confinement system or complete confinement system so ito yung mga systems of root of rearing natin the free range the semi confinement and the complete confinement system when we say free range system it requires more land area kaya ang tawag sa kanila usually is extensive system. Okay? So, extensive. Mal mas malawak yung area na kailangan. Okay? okay? That is why this is adapted only when adequate land is uh, available to ensure that desired stocking density is uh, met okay? by avoiding overcrowding. Okay? Para mamit yung uh, desired stocking density. Ano ba yung tinatawag nating stocking density? This is the number of animals kept or reared on a given unit of area. Okay? Ilan ba yung dapat na number of animals for a particular area? No. So, meron. Okay? In the free range system, uh, we have 250 birds per hectare. So, this is um, yung stocking, desired stocking density in a free range system. Okay? Or, or an in, in an extensive system. So, a range provides the following, shelter, greens, feeds, water, and of course, yung shade. Okay, yung, uh, saan galing yung shade? Kasi, merong mga puno sa uh, surroundings, etc. So, hindi lang, hindi dahil free range system sila, wala ng shade doon sa uh, area. Okay, uh, foraging, yung feeds, no? Foraging is the major source of feeding for birds raised for uh, raised in an extensive system kasi in a free range system maraming grasses no in the surroundings so they can feed on the grasses no um, aside from uh, sa mga binibigay natin na feeds no? so very important yung uh, forages kasi aside from uh, sa feeds na um, cost of production natin um, nalelesen, no? Yung expenses natin when it comes to feeds. Kasi nga sabi natin, feeds comprise 75% of cost of production. Whether that be in poultry production, in swine production, or in ruminant production. Okay? So, malaking tulong yung forages. Okay. Uh, shelter also. Uh, this is usually provided by pro uh, by temporary roofing, no, supported by ordinary poles. So, minsan naglalagay din sila. Siyempre, ang free range area naman, hindi naman uh, uh, parang unlimited yung area, no. Uh, meron ding uh, boundaries. Meron ding fence yan. Pero, malayo, malawak, no. Malawak yung area covered by the fence. Kaya, we need uh, yung post, poles pa rin. Okay. The fields are generally used on rotational basis. So, sabi nga natin, um, nag merong forages. So, hindi naman lahat ng uh, forages doon ay magkakapareho. So, it is important that we diversify yung forages na uh, tinatanim natin doon sa free range area or sa pasture area kung tawagin natin. Kasi nga, para kapag natapos na sila sa isang part, sa susunod na 
uh, araw naman or sa susunod na week, pupunta sila sa other um, forages para rotational. Okay? Yung mangyayari. Okay? So, what else? Okay, let's proceed now to uh, the advantages. Okay? Um, free range system, sa so free range system, lesser investment, less capital investment lang. And then, cost of housing is least kasi hindi ka nagagastos sa housing facilities and materials like roof, uh, galvanized iron, nails, wood fences, or concrete fences, etc. Okay, so konti lang yung kailangan mo um, na materials, no housing materials doon sa free range system natin. Okay, so since they feed on grasses, feed requirements are lesser. Ano? Since birds consume a fairly good amount of feed from the forages in the range area. Ano? And apart from that, fertility of the soil can be maintained. Soil fertility is maintained no? because of the give and take relationship of the soil and the chickens. So, anong ginagawa ng soil? The soil provides an area for the chickens to play and roam around. Ano? It serves as the range area itself. Okay? And then, syempre, yung litter material, material or yung wastes from the chicken are left in the soil. And with time, it could be incorporated in the soil. And thus, masasabi natin na soil fertility is maintained. Okay? However, no, despite the advantages, it has also its disadvantages. Okay? So, among these are the following. Number one is scientific management practices cannot be adapted. Okay? Egg collection problems. There are times when eggs are lost when laid inside the dense grasses unless maglalagay kayo ng nest doon sa range area. Okay? Losses because there might be predatory animals roaming around. no? Uh, and wild birds may bring diseases unless proper care is taken. So, yun yung advantages and disadvantages of a free range or an extensive system. The second type of rearing system is the semi-confinement system or this is sometimes called semi-intensive system. Okay, so as the name indicates, chickens are halfway reared in houses uh, and halfway on ground or range. Okay, such that birds are confined to houses parang dito at night, no? Or as desired, kung gusto nila, kung may naiinitan sila, meron silang sisilungan. And they are also given access to forage area. Okay? So, kaya semi-intensive. So, half free range, half uh, total confinement siya. Okay? Kung tawagin. And, yung stocking density natin dito sa um, semi-confinement, mas marami. 750 per hectare. Okay? Oh, sorry. This should be, uh, okay, of course, houses have solid roofs, sabi nga natin. Since this is semi-confinement system, meron tayong established na housing para sa kanila. Okay, so, houses should have solid floors. Uh, runs are fields only. Ito yung sinasabi nating runs, no? Yung forage area, yung pasture area. And then, yung um, success, success, sorry, success of rearing depends on the maintenance of condition of runs. Okay? So, dapat ma-maintain natin yung runs natin para, of course, there is a uh, an assigned forage area for the chickens to feed on. Okay? Uh, so, yun yung sinasabi ko kanina na stocking density. Sa 3-range system, ang stocking density is 250 birds per hectare. In a semi-confinement system, dahil meron tayong housing, okay? So, mas marami ang um birds, no? 750 per hectare. 750 adult birds. Okay? So, um, usually, hindi lang sa chickens, no? Ginagamit yung semi-confinement system. This is also popular for duck rearing, ano? Okay? The feed, um, yung sa housing nila, o oh, yan, kung makikita ninyo ito, um, yung feeding and watering facilities are provided na in this uh, housing, ano? So, yun. Hindi lang access to forage. Meron din silang Um, feeding and watering facilities doon sa house nila. Now, these are the advantages of housing the chickens in a semi-confinement system. Okay, so there is more economical land use uh, of land. So, there is more economical land use than free range. No? The birds are protected from extreme climatic or weather conditions. 
Okay. There is, uh, sabi nga natin kanina, meron silang housing. So, there is an accessible shelter for them to stay on during or when environmental conditions are not specially favorable to them. And then, uh, there is some scientific management practices uh, uh, controlled. So, meron tayong control over these scientific management management practices kasi meron tayong housing na tinatawag. So, semi-confinement sila. Okay? But even if the land is uh, uh, more economically used, no, in a semi-intensive or semi-confinement system, there is high cost required for fencing because half of the area is used for establishing or constructing the poultry house. So, meron na tayong house na in-establish or binibuild sa isang semi-confinement or sa isang semi-intensive na system. Okay? Apart from that, there is also a need for routine cleaning and, of course, removal of litter material from the house no, na in-establish natin. Of course, to maintain and practice no, yung tinatawag natin hygiene and sanitation, there is a need to clean no, the area. Ay, sorry. What happened? Hmm. I'm sorry. Okay, dito pala tayo. So, there, sabi ko kanina, there is a need to clean the area, no? such that the incidence of diseases and possible contamination uh, among the flock no? are avoided. Okay, so that's for the semi-intensive or semi-confinement system. The third and last system of breeding is the complete confinement system. So, as you notice, the birds here are totally confined, no? either on ground floor, sabi dito, wire netting floor in cages. So, these are uh, examples of cages. <coughs> As you can see in the picture. Or on slats, no? Bamba slats, maari din. And with this, um, it is considered to be the most efficient, most convenient, and most economical system for modern poultry production with huge numbers, no? This is especially true when you are raising a uh, large number of uh, layer chickens. So, mas mataas yung population mo, it's more economical na gagamit ka ng complete confinement system. Kasi habang kung mag-free range ka, eh, ang free range, ang stocking density lang naman is 250 per birds. Paano kung gusto mong mag-raise ng, uh, per, sorry, the, is 250 birds per hectare. Paano kung gusto mong mag-raise ng 1,000 birds? Eh di, you need 4 hectares to raise 1,000 birds in a free-range system. So, yun. So, mas efficient yung complete confinement system kapag gusto mong mag-alaga ng mas madaming uh, mas madaming chickens or grower chickens or layer chickens. Okay? So, ito yung uh, intensive system uh, advantages. One is, you only need less land. And day-to-day -day management is easier. So, minimum land Konti lang yung kailangan man land, pero you are raising a high number of chickens, okay? And day-to-day -day management is easier, tulad ng paglilinis, removal of litter from the from the house, etc. Feeding, ganon, okay? So, apart from that, the production performance is relatively higher because, of course, more energy is saved due to restricted yung movement. Sa free-range system, mas uh, free yung movement nila. So, pum pupunta sila kung saan-saan nila gusto. So, mas na-exercise yung chickens doon. Okay? So, aside from that, no, um, we can easily detect no, yung uh, diseases. And when we easily detect yung diseases, na-apply natin or na-treat natin no, yung diseases immediately. Okay? And easily and accurately. Ano? Uh, Okay, so yun, it's important kasi that, uh, especially kapag marami kang uh, birds na inaalagaan, tendency is uh, high chance yung spread of diseases. Kasi crowded siya, um, tapos syempre kung mas marami sila, mas mainit doon sa uh, house na yun and subject to stress sila. So, stress, kapag nai-stress ang isang animal or isang tao, mas prone siya sa sakit. Okay? Um, aside from that, yung intensive system kasi, di ba sabi natin kanina sa free range system, we cannot uh, adapt yung scientific management practices. The same intensive system, some manage scientific management practices are controlled 
dito sa intensive system, we can uh, accurately practice, easily practice yung scientific management practices like breeding. So, nakokontrol natin yung breeding nila. So, hindi random yung breeding. So, selective breeding yung nagagawa natin, yung feeding, yung medication, yung culling, etc. So, yun. So, kahit pa meron tayong sinasabing most economical, most efficient, ano pa, minimum land, etc. Yung welfare ng birds is affected. Kasi nga, marami sila. Because they, they are totally confined no, in the four corners of their cages or of their houses. So, they cannot perform their natural behavior like roosting, okay, spreading wings, scratching the floor, scratching the ground, using their feet, etc. Okay? Also, since they are not exposed to outside sunlight and feed resources, all of the nutrients should be provided in a balanced manner. So, right amount, right kind at the right time. Ano? To avoid nutritional problems or yung tinatawag nating nutritionally deficient diseases. Okay? Aside from that, the spread of diseases is faster, sabi ko nga kanina, in comparison to the other two systems of rearing. Okay? So, those are the three systems of rearing. Their features, their advantage, at advantages, and disadvantages. No, yung rearing system, yung semi-intensive or semi-confinement, okay, and yung complete confinement or yung intensive system na sinasabi natin, okay. Now let's proceed to the floor space requirements for the total confinement system, okay. I repeat, this is specifically for the total confinement system. So, if you use litter floor, these are the type no, ng confinement system natin. So, if you use litter floor, each bird should occupy 2 to 2.5 square feet per bird. Okay? So, 2 to 2.5 square feet. Smaller area for slotted floors and much smaller for cages. So, sa litter floor, yung pinaka- wide yung area occupied by bird and then followed by slatted floors and then yung cages okay now the growing period of pullets begins from the end of brooding yung brooding stage natin up to the time these are ready to lay their eggs so until early sexual maturity okay this period usually starts at four weeks and ends at about 16 weeks, no? So, 4 to 16 weeks of age. But, it's important to take note that this still depends on the breed or strain you are using. Okay? So, it differs across breed or across strain. Okay? The laying performance, no, of the pullets is greatly influenced by the kind of management the birds receive during the pre-laying period. So, yung pre-laying period natin, itong growing, itong growing stage na, or yung growing period, okay? Therefore, good management during this growing period is important or is essential to ensure the production of good quality ready-to-lay pullets. So, ang products natin sa, dito sa part na to is ready-to-lay pullets because mistakes made during the growing phase in here, no, cannot be corrected kapag nasa laying period na sila. Okay? So, madadala nila yung mga mistakes or yung mga deficiencies nila dito sa growing period kapag hindi sila naalaga ng maayos. Okay? So, here, light management, transfer of pullets, cannibalism, signs of sexual maturity and culling yung discuss natin dito sa part na to. Now, in terms of light management, this actually affects no, yung production performance of the plant. Hence, it is important not to increase the length of light exposure of pullets during the growing periods. It's important to take note, okay? Uh, the length no, of light exposure could remain constant, says here, or decreasing, but should not be increasing. Why? Because pullets tend to come to production at a younger age if grown under natural day length during January to June when daylight hours are increasing and from July to December when daylight hours are decreasing. Okay? Kapag ganon, the start of egg laying is delayed. Okay? 
Kaya ang nangyayari is that increasing, no, kapag tinataasan natin yung hours of light during the growing period, mas magmamature earlier yung pullets natin. And as a result, kapag mamature sila earlier, they will start to lay eggs. Pero, ang kanilang iitlog ay maliliit. Okay? So, early maturing nga, pero smaller eggs. Okay? So, anong gagawin natin? Mas maganda na, be delay sexual maturity. Okay? Kapag late maturing yung pulet, um, late din sa mga itlog, pero mas malaki yung kanyang iitlog. So, yun yung um, difference ng dalawa. So, when do pullets start lay eggs? Okay, usually, pullets start laying uh, at uh, 18 to 21 uh, weeks of age. But this is still, sabi ko nga, this still depends on the breeder spring. Okay? Now, these are the things, no, to take note when transferring pullets. Okay, the transfer of pullets should be, saan natin yung transfer? Transfer of pullets from the grower house to the laying house. Okay? It should be one month before onset of egg production. And the birds should not be allowed to lay eggs in the rearing house. Kasi kung ganun, uh, madedevelop nila yung egg eating habits. Okay? And of course, importante yung uh, careful and proper handling. Um, bakit natin, uh, by the way, bakit natin tinatransfer yung mga pullets one month before onset of egg production? Kasi, kapag tinatransfer mo yung uh, pullets just at the start of egg production, this will affect yung laying per -per performance. And this could cause internal egg breakage. Okay? So, yun. Dapat one month before onset of uh, egg production. Sa careful and proper handling, you have to uh, transfer them during fair weather. So, dapat hindi mainit yung panahon, uh, mas preferable, mas, uh, mas okay yung uh, you transfer them at night when the birds are calm and easier to handle. And then, yung age at first egg natin um, depends upon the breed, sabi ko nga kanina. Ano yung age at first egg? This is the time or the age of the chicken at which the egg is first laid. Kung sa kailan siya unang nangitlog. Okay? Sabi ko kanina, generally, egg type breeds come into production when these are about 18 to 20 or 21 weeks of age. Okay? And then we have here cannibalism. And this is a bad habit. No? Cannibalism is a bad habit among chickens no? of all ages. So, hindi lang growing chickens, kundi pati na rin kung sila isisiw pa kung nasa brooding stage, okay? Pati na rin kung laying, nasa laying stage sila. So, it starts usually from toe pecking and feather pecking, no? which may result in serious wounding and death of birds. And these are the possible causes of uh, cannibalism. One is imbalanced rations. So, hindi tama yung binibigay mong diet sa kanila. Overcrowding, and insufficient feeding and drinking spaces. So, kapag gutom sila, ano, um, wala silang iinumin, syempre, anong gagawin? Tutukain nila yung kapwa nila. Overcrowding, stressful, mainit. So, tendency is, <coughs> they will tend to find, fight, fight against, against each other. So, they fight for space. Okay? But else, hunger. So, hunger, uh, gutom, insufficient feed. Okay. What else? Poor ventilation and uh, excessive heat and too much sunlight no? in the growing house. So, lahat ng to, this will lead to stress. May stress yung chicken pag ganito. O pag stress yung chicken, ayan, gagawa siya ng hindi kaaya-aya. Cannibalism is one. Okay? So, what should we do then to at least minimize this problem? No, Of course, we have to look at the this one causes, we have to know the real problem. You have to observe the flock. Okay? Kung nakikita mong overcrowded yung, um, yung kulungan, or lu luwagan mo ang space, or ihiwalay mo yung iba. Okay? Yan, sabi ko kanina, serious and this cannibalism of growing chicken leads to serious wounding and death of birds. So, yan, what to do? Proper feeding 
proper housing, big trimming, or the baking and proper ventilation. We have to know, you know, yung real causes or yung root cause, yung problems talaga. So that, alam natin kung ano yung i-correct natin. Kasi kung hindi natin alam yung causes, hindi natin alam kung ano yung gagawin. So yan, in imbalance rations, insufficient feeds or hunger, we have to properly feed them. Overcrowding, tapos insufficient spaces, dapat proper housing, ano. And then, big trimming or the baking is usually uh, recommended. And, of course, to uh, address this poor ventilation, we have to have proper ventilation. Dapat maganda yung air circulation uh, within the house or inside the house. Yan. So, this is uh, an example of a chicken na na okay, or na trim yung beak niya, okay? So, after 16 weeks of age, the reproductive organs of pullets will start to develop. So, sexually mature na sila. In preparation for reproduction or yung tinatawag nating egg production. And this is manifested by the change in appearance of the secondary sexual characters. So, the manifestations, of course, are the signs the sexual maturity is already reached include the following. Number one is the increase in comb and wattle size. So, the comb and wattles will begin to increase no, in size and the color becomes red. Okay? The color of the comb and wattle becomes red. Tends to redden. Ano? No, number three, the pullets become friendly and cackle. Okay? So, mas uh, friendly na sila. Sociable. And then, Pullets become docile and gregarious. So, ibig sabihin, when we say docile, mas maamo na sila, they are easily managed. And when you say gregarious, mas friendly, mas sociable na sila. And then, the vent and abdomen become enlarged. So, mapapansin ninyo yan. Okay? So, even if we have here yung uh, manifestations or signs of sexual maturity, the surest sign is the laying of the first egg. When the chicken has already laid her first egg, that's the sign that she has already reached sexual maturity. Okay? Tulad din nung sa baboy. Kapag nakita mong um, naglandi yung baboy, makita mo yung mga iba't ibang signs. No? Secondary signs. Yung reddening, swelling of the vulva, uh, standing uh, when mounted, etc. Grunting, frequent urination, Yung mga ganun, uh, those are uh, manifestations, those are secondary signs. But the surest sign of a sow or a guilt in estrus is yung standing heat. Okay? So, meron din tayong surest sign of sexual maturity dito sa uh, case ng layer chickens. And that is yung laying of the first egg. Okay? So, although the most awaited time in raising pullets is when they begin producing eggs, no? It is not desirable to uh, hurry them up to production, no? Too early because, sabi ko nga kanina, too early maturity leads to production of too many small eggs. And lower egg production rate. Tendency to obtain lower production, egg production rate. During the whole production period, ha? Hindi lang sa start, but in the whole production period. And higher mortality, Higher incidence of prolapse, etc. So, ito yung mga uh, maaring epekto when we uh, when we hasten yung sexual maturity nila. So, anong gagawin natin para hindi mapaaga yung sexual maturity? Huwag natin i-increase yung light exposure or yung light duration ng mga grower chickens natin. Okay? Yan. Speaking of measures no, to delay sexual maturity, okay, these are the solutions no, that we can practice para hindi early yung sexual maturity ng chickens natin, egg type chicken. So, number one, reduce feed quantity. Of course, you have to reduce the actual amount of feed that you give to the chickens. And the amount of reduction will depend on the extent of delaying required. And the composition, of course, of the diet. So, some poultry raisers have practiced reduction in actual volume of the feed. So, it is recommended talaga. Makita nila yon. Second is fiber diet. 
the feed can be diluted by incorporating a fiber, high fiber diet, okay, high fiber materials such as rice or rice hulls, okay, the pullets should be full fed, no, kapag merong fiber diet, you have to fully fed them, fully feed them rather, okay, and then number three is low protein or particularly yung lysine, okay, kapag low yung protein ng diet nila, this delays the sexual maturity, okay, low protein and high fiber, so yun yung tatandaan ninyo. Number four, so kung ayaw mo ng reduce uh, feed quantity, maaari ka ding mag-practice ng skip feeding. No? So, huwag mo muna silang pakainin for a meal. Okay, for, okay, to delay the sexual maturity. And then, of course, importante yung light reduction. Okay, reduce light. Yun yung mga isa sa pinaka-importante na measures or solutions to delay sexual maturity. Kasi alam natin na when we increase light intensity or light duration or light exposure na tinatawag natin, mas mapapadali yung, er, yung sexual maturity nila. So, we have to do the opposite. No? We have to do the opposite to delay their sexual maturity. And that is light reduction. You have to reduce the light. Mas maigi na yung increase light when they are already in the layer stage. Okay? Laying stage, rather. Okay, so that's all for this management of growers. Um, I hope you were able no, to take down notes and I hope you were able to understand the things that I discussed. So thank you very much uh, for listening.